Hello, and welcome to Avio's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business, sidestep all of the crazy things that I seem to step on. It is Wednesday, May 11th, and as you can see, I have Adobe Audition open, my DAW, and I am going to show you today how to format your audio file for ACX standards from beginning to end, each specific thing that you need to do. I had gotten a question in the comments asking if I could show you how to format your work uh, for ACX, an audiobook for ACX, without using plugins that are not... Um, uh, that are not that that don't come with uh, Adobe Audition, right? Like no NS1, um, Isotope, because a lot you know we we all know Isotope standard, which is excellent, and I highly recommend that you get those plugins because it makes your life so much easier. But it is expensive, right? The standard version standard version is usually three hundred and ninety nine dollars, so it does take some money. I mean, it does go on sale, and I always say look for the sales because sometimes it's half off, like one ninety nine, and it is so worth it. But you know, it it, it does um, cost a bit of money. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, I'm going to do my best to kind of share with you from beginning and to end. Uh, what we're not going to talk about is just you know you recording the file. Okay, um, real quick though, with recording the file, when you record, okay, um, the first thing that you really want to do, <clears throat> I'm actually going to um, change this to, so I'm in my editing station, so I want to make sure that because I have an Apollo Twin and I have two mics, because I got my mic here, my RE20, and then my 416 in my booth, but I want to make sure my RE20 is going through uh, Adobe Audition, the first thing you want to do before you even start recording is you need to check your levels on your DAW with your microphone and your interface. And a great way, most all of the DAWs have this option, but uh, on Adobe Audition, there is a meter down at the bottom. Uh, if you cannot find, and it's not there, if you go to Window, all right, and then you go to, uh, let's see, it's Level Meters. All right, see, like if I click that off, there's no meter there. You might have no meter on your, your screen right now. Just go to window, click level meters, that pops up. Then all you gotta do is go down here and double click, and you can see it shows uh, how loud my speaking is, what the dB level is. What you want to do is you wanna set the gain on your interface so that when you're speaking, you are averaging between negative 12 to negative 6 dB. It can go below, it can go above, it can, you know, see where it goes a little bit above sometimes, but generally speaking, it stays within negative 12 to negative 6. I like to record in this way so that when I, you know, go to finish the audio, I don't have a file that's too, too soft or too, too loud. It's actually right where I want it to be, okay? All right, so with that being said, let's turn that off. <clears throat> um, I've recorded my file, okay? You see here I record, this was a... Today. For any real-time business, this was a uh, uh, this was an audio file or, or a, a gig earlier to uh, just earlier today for a job. So we're just going to use this. Um, so the first thing I like to do, okay, whenever I go about recording something after I'm finished, is I want to do EQ, and because EQ is so particular to your space and your voice. I like to use something called a parametric equalizer, okay? And it'll usually come as default. And in the parametric equalizer, this is a wonderful tool, especially in Adobe Audition, that when you play it, it shows you in real time the um, dB levels of your actual voice, uh, frequencies of your voice and where they are. So here- Every microsecond counts. Is this a real user? Is it a breach? So you can see as it's going, it's showing you where the high levels are, where it's louder, where it's not as loud, et cetera, et cetera. And our goal, of course, with EQ, remember, is to not, we want to make our voice sound natural. The first thing we want to do is take away any frequencies that are any issues, okay? And, you know, the, the, the challenge with this is, and the way I always say it, is on a pullback side note, your space is so important 
treating your space correctly is everything. If your space is treated uh, perfectly, you're not going to have any issues. A lot of people who have a really well-treated space, they don't even need to worry about EQ. I mean, they just, you know, you don't have to because once you get it to the correct volume, all right, that we're going to go over here, you don't have to worry about it. But I, what I really recommend, because everyone is so different, okay, is on Adobe Audition, really, Using something called the loudness maximizer, it gives you a little boost on the high end, a little boost on the low end, okay? And, you know, it gives you that nice boost on the high end where it gives you some crispness and then a little base for some fullness on the bottom. Can we do a lot more with this? Absolutely. We can, you know, do things like rolling off, okay? And this this will go into your microphone. This goes into your space. Like, for example, what type of microphone do you have? And a lot of microphones have specific, um, they come with um, information that will show you what it, where exactly in the Hertz range does, does the microphone add a little boost, take a little boost away, all right? And the stats of the microphone. Uh, so some microphones boost lower higher that's why your more expensive microphones you don't need to do as much because they have different ranges whereas some of the less expensive microphones their ranges are a little higher and they're not as um they don't have as in-depth of a range as some of the more expensive microphones but anyways i i really recommend keeping it simple i know some people want this all-out fix for for the issues but i'm telling you the all the all out fix is treating your space treating your spell your space correctly with um you know acoustically treated foam uh, or acoustic uh, acoustic um insulation with foam really making it sound dead in there and it absorbs if you're have if you have a lower voice using foam that's about you know or insulation that's four inches thick. I like Owens Corning or Rockwool. Those work really well. You know, three, two to four inches thick work really well. Then I, as you guys have seen my studio, I, I put a lot of stuff on it. But it's so important for you to do that. When it comes to this, all right, you know, you have um, a lot of different things here. You've got different ranges in the Hertz level. Like here's your lower end for your bass, uh, right around between, you know, uh, around 200, 100 to 200. This is what we we hear as fullness in our voice. All right, it gives that fullness, that body. Uh, when we get up to the 3200, between 800 to 3200, this is where that boxiness sound comes in. All right, that boxiness sound. Um, so, you know, th a lot of frequency, a lot of times when we're doing this, people like to take away some of this. Okay. And then on the higher end, when we get to oh, a little over 6,000 up, that's where the crispness comes in. Okay. Yes, there is sibilance. That's in here as well. Those are the S and the T's and, you know, and those things like that. So those frequencies are different between men and women, but they're usually around six to 9,000 hertz. They can vary, but those are basically the areas where uh, you have problems with sibilance. But, you know, the high end between 6,000 up, okay, over 10,000, 12,000 um, is where you get that crisp sound. Right, that brightness in the voice where it comes alive. So these are some these are these are just general um, areas. And what you can do is you can raise these, you can lower these manually, you can also type these in. But here's the thing, like I said, I you know for this particular tutorial, I just wanted to do the ACX stuff. But it's important that you know um, this particular uh, plug. Uh, it's not a plugin. It comes with Adobe Audition, but this particular effect. And I love to do loudness maximizer. I always do EQ first, no matter what. You record something. The first thing you do is EQ first. Do not take away um, background noise first. Do not raise the volume first. You know, or normalize, or do any of this stuff. Do EQ first. And the reason why you do EQ first is because we're manipulating. We are. We're manipulating your frequencies. We're manipulating your voice. So we don't want to do that after we've taken away a bunch of stuff because if we do that, it's going to raise lower in places but raise um, the dB level in certain places. And because of that, you might need to go back and take away background noise again. So it's really important to do this first. 
So you do the loudness maximizer first, okay? Um, and after that, when I do audiobooks, I do not use compression personally. And the reason, the reason I don't use compression is because we're going to use the loudness tab here, up here, to actually make sure we, we get the correct RMS setting, okay, the correct volume setting. I don't like to use compression in this sense, okay? Um, so I only do EQ. Now, after EQ, I go, that's all I do to manipulate my voice. Remember, keep it simple. When I first started, all I did was too much stuff, and it degraded my audio. The next part is then now we want to, after we've done EQ, we want to do a little bit of uh, cleaning up your audio, okay? So using what we have in Adobe Audition, I always, always first, when I go to clean up my audio, try to get rid of mouth noise or mouth clicks, all right? So if you come down to uh, noise reduction, they do have a click pop eliminator process and they also have an automatic click remover now here's the thing i i like to try to use you know what i can on here because it can you know it it I, like i said i would personally use isotope and the mouthy click that's what i use i recommend it 100 but for the sake of this tutorial you know we, we're, we're using what we have so a revolutionary come over here today for any real-time business, every microsecond counts. Is this a real use? So you have something like constant hiss. Now, here's the challenge with this. I've actually this one is this one is not here's here's where the challenge comes in. You have to make sure, and this is what happens in Isotope, that you're actually picking the right one, right? So that one is more for you. Um, uh, this is for like uh, records or things like that. It's not really for mouth. This is more for your mouth. I never, I always start with light reduction here. Okay. And I come through today for any real time business, every microsecond. Can I go, maybe let's go to medium. Okay. Remember because we're using Adobe audition, we don't have a lot more settings other than this. Okay, and you're going to have to... For any real-time business, every microsecond counts. So this is removing your automatic clicks. Let me... Or, or your, your, more, your, your mouth noise. All right, click. That kind of stuff. Just real quick, I'm going to show you manual way. Make sure that when you're doing that, you if you go to like heavy reduction, okay, what you'll find is this... These, like this stuff, if it's not done correctly, these these uh, settings, I said this, these stuff, the, these settings will degrade your audio to where it sounds poor. It sounds very, um, it just sounds bad. You know, there, there were missing ends. There's words chopped off. Is this a real user? Is it a breach? Approve the purchase. Is this a fraud? Multiply each decision by billions. So, you know, you can see, um, you know, I, because I've actually already done this audio, you know what I mean? There's really not a lot of clicks on it, but, you know, I want to show you the manual way. Let me warn you, the manual way works 100% of the time and it does not degrade your audio. However, it is, it, 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 I, when I first started, I did this to every single piece of audio I did and it was exhausting, but... It works. So let me let me take a moment. So if you manually get rid of clicks, mouth noises, what you do is you want to have on the spectral analysis, right, which is the, the spectral frequency display. And basically what this is, is this is like a, I like to look at it as like a heat map, right? It's like a heat map of your, your frequencies of the volume, all right, like how loud it is in, in the particular hertz range of your voice. Okay. So, but this is really cool because I, I think of it like the, the matrix, uh, <laughs> when you're first starting out, you're like, what is this? But as you do this longer and you become more familiar with your voice and everything, what you find is I'm just scrolling in is that you can see things within this, right? You can start, you can, you can pick up patterns and things that are happening. So here's a perfect example. So right here, you can see this little, uh, uh, I guess this little line that seems a little out of place. It's around the globe. So actually, yeah, you can hear it. On the hear that click right there? It's right there. On the So that's a mouth click right here. And you might say, how did you do it? I found that because I could see that this little line is out of place here. 
All right, just like this little line seems out of place. Okay, so what you do to get rid of this manually, because like, for example, an audacity, is there a spectral frequency? Yes, but audacity is very difficult to, uh, it doesn't have as much tools, of course, as Adobe Audition. No, it's free. Um, but on this one, if you were trying to figure this out, you could do it a couple of ways. Okay, well, I like to do, I'll show you the way I like to do it. So up here, there are these tools um, and these allow you to use your cursor to create different shapes. All right, and then on top of that, in your effects uh, page, you have something called Auto Heal. And what this Auto Heal does is it uses their AI to detect all the frequencies, what's around the, the audio section that you're trying to heal, okay? And by using all of that, it heals it, but does not erase it, right? It just replaces it what it thinks it should be. Um, so what I like to do is I like to take this, highlight this little section. I have auto heal. I have it, um, I have it uh, shortcutted to my keyboard uh, with for, on the letter C, but I'm going to go ahead and click this, all right? I hit auto heal. And if you see, look at that, it took it away. So now... If I cover that on the globe, you see there's no click there anymore. On the it's gone. So it was that simple to take it away. And by using um, that C, my my shortcut, you see I, I highlight this, I just hit C, look at that, takes it away. But it does not erase the um you can see like right here, it didn't actually silence. So if I go back. All right, and I take this and I silence it. So this is me silencing it. So you can see what happens when you silence it. All right, um, and you don't want to do that. So I hit C, which is the auto heal, and you can see the difference. It keeps the file, but it gets rid of, of that click. It really is fantastic. Um, just on a side note, here's another thing too. We could, I got to make sure I keep this um, people able to to watch this and go on with their day because you know this could go on forever because there's so much but i realized something that i just did to to help you guys so if you go to edit now if you're on a mac it's under edit under keyboard shortcuts if you're on a pc i believe it's under file okay but if you but you're on a um a mac it's under keyboard shortcuts all right, what you do is you pull that up, and this is a visual display of your keyboard and all of the different shortcuts that you've done. So what you would do is you would come into the little uh, search tab, hit auto heal, type that in, all right? And then what you would do is it's under effects right here. All you would do is you can drag it. You just click it and drag it to where you want it to be. So like I'll drag it to here, you see that? And there it is. All right, I can go ahead and um, now, I, of course, I have mine on C, like I said, but um, and, and here, because you can see I already have it and a favorite as well. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit cancel. But that's how you go ahead and set an actual keyboard shortcut. OK, and, and it makes things way faster. And yes, if you're thinking, wait a minute, can I can I set entire so like in your effects rack, can you set entire uh, cleanup presets? Yes. So like a my cleanup preset, right, after I record is mouth to click, voice to noise, dynamics processing, hard limiter. That's that's what I use. Okay, when I'm actual like right, I just I it's and right for me it's on my keyboard shortcut letter B. And I just click one button, it does all of these things. I don't have to go through. Okay, so th these things speed up a lot, but Getting back to this, when you know, because we're not using that stuff, that's how you do it manually. How to do it automatically using Adobe Audition? You go here, go to Automatic Click Remover. I recommend you don't do any more than medium, but you can play around with these things, okay, uh, and see where they, you know, see see how it lands. But you don't want to degrade your audio, okay. So from this point, after you do this, if you have a background noise issue. Right, you can go back here, go to, it says denoise, adaptive noise direction, uh, reduction. So in this- Already boost their operation with aero spikes typically reducing. So I'm having heavy noise reduction, de-reverb, light noise reduction. All right, you can, you know, this is again, more things for you to mess around with. Um, I think 
when you're when you're doing this, you can also use the denoise, which I have on D. All right, and server footprint and by eighty percent, even as business and data grows. Every microsecond counts. Aerospying. And what I love about some of these things is it. So, of course, my stuff is pretty quiet, but you can use those tools, okay, to, you know, and I, again, I like to use the lighter medium. I don't like to use heavy. Heavy, a lot of times, will mess up your, your audio, okay? Here's another thing that I like to do as well, especially with breaths. I've worked, I do a lot of audio editing for people and their audio books, uh, and what happens is a lot of times they'll have breaths in here, right? And some people hate breaths. Uh, you know, it's it's a part of what we do as voice actors is breathing. So br not all breaths are bad. And especially in audiobooks, see, like you don't want to take all the time with always. You don't want to take away all of your breaths. However, if a breath is so loud that, you know, if you're talking, 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 <gasps> talking, 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 right, which sometimes we do, it can take people, rip them out of that suspension of disbelief. Right, which is a phrase we use when we're trying to keep people in that creative land that that we've put together in the audiobook. Okay, we don't want to rip them away from that um, imagination, what or or they're they're picturing what we're talking about because of a rogue big breath we take or we took. Okay, so it's important that we are aware of how to do that. I like to do something if I'm trying to completely get rid of a breath. I will highlight a small area, okay, that is not, that there's not a breath there. I will hit Command C and copy that. Okay, that is, that's, again, that's just a copy on, on Mac. And I'll come in here, right, and I'll find a place where it actually has a breath or something there, and I'll hit Command V, and it pastes that section into it, effectively just getting rid of that. And I can do this. How can you process large I'm amounts of listening. data? Right. And make the right decision so in the microsecond moment that matters. Aerospike, a revolutionary real-time data platform. And so I'm listening to this, all right, making sure it sounds right. And I'm going through and adding or taking away uh, uh, voice, you know, things uh, uh, like um, breaths or things like that. Another way that you can do that is also here, all right, you've got this little marquee or this little, um, uh, I don't even know what this thing is called. But um, it allows you to adjust. You can raise or lower right here manually quickly on, right on the, on the dash uh, of the screen without having to go and do all kinds of other stuff. So I can basically highlight an area. I can reduce it, right? And you can see it reduced it. Now, you might be like, well, why don't I just silence all of these? Because you can silence something, right? Meaning like you can make it be no, um, nothing well it's very unnatural and you'll be talking and talking and then all of a sudden you hear a silence and be like and then you start talking again and it's weird this is why i don't recommend people using the dbx 286s when they're trying to eliminate background noise by using a, a gate a voice gate because you know gate if you think about it when it's open it lets everything in when it closes, nothing gets in. Well, the problem with that is, is it sounds very unnatural, right? Because if you open the gate and you're talking and you've got background noise, but then you close the gate and it's completely silent, every time when you listen back and you hear someone speaking, it's going to sound odd because you hear all this background noise. But then when it, they're not speaking, it's super quiet. So, it, it right, it makes your audio sound really less professional. So I don't like to use noise gates. If you are live streaming or you're a gamer, noise gates make a lot of sense. But what we're doing, noise gates do not make a lot of sense. Again, I cannot stress enough that like the voice to noise, all right, especially like the adaptive, like this is this is Aerospike the provides best. predictable performance. One of the best scale. things that you can do. NS1, okay, NS1 is okay, used very um, very limited. If you overdo NS1, you will um, suppress a lot more of your audio with the frequencies than you want to. And you'll notice that some of your words will be cut off. They'll, it'll sound muffled. 
You're like, why do I sound muffled? And then you will spend all of your time with EQ trying to make it sound better when in reality, because you're using NS1 and it's suppressing that, you know, it's it's really suppressing that um, volume or those frequencies, there's not much you can do. And you just go on this endless cycle back and forth until your audio sounds like, you know, doesn't sound good at all. So I I like to stick away from that and try to find things. But Worst case scenario, when you're not using, you don't have any other plugins, use light noise reduction under the effects under here, okay? Use that light noise uh, for denoise, okay? So at this point, you should be able to, um, you know, have a piece of audio that we need that we can then go and format correctly. One other thing I like to show you though, and I'm not sure, let me see. I'm gonna record something real quick so we can get some background noise. I'm gonna hold my breath. <gasps> Okay, so actually, it's pretty cool if you think of um, like my my voice is I mean like the the background noise is very low here, but with that being said, let's go ahead and show you this. All right, so here we see we've got background noise. Okay, this is all these colors, right? This is all background noise. What I can do to get rid of this too is I'm gonna highlight a spot. I'm gonna go to effects, <clears throat> amplitude and compression, dynamics processing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put it on a loop, a toggle loop. What I'm trying to do is get a get an idea of where it's peaking at. All right. So right here, you can see it looks like it is peaking around negative 50 or so. So I'm going to go ahead and put a point there. And all you got to do to put a little point on this line is click. All right. Then I like to come down to negative 85 personally, I'll put another point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull it this way. And what it's doing is it's reducing that noise, okay, by negative 18 dB. Okay, it's suppressing all the noise that starts at negative 48.1 dB below, all right, and it is suppressing it. OK, and so, you know, that's something that and then if I sit here and I apply. Look at that. But you'll notice here. Right. Look, it's not all the way gone, which is what you want. We don't want if I come here, you look how low like that's not very high. <laughs> so we don't want it to be completely silent, but this works wonders. And yes, you can do this over the whole file. Right. You just come in here because it only is going to um, it's only going to mess with noise that is at negative forty eight point one dB or lower. It is not going to mess with anything above, which is all of your um, spoken word. So this is something so you know, so I can do this. See how it took away that. But again, it doesn't arrow spike a revolutionary. It doesn't affect my audio at all. So that's another way dynamics processing that you can use, which you can see I have on mine, right? I use dynamic processing on mine. Um, and then hard limiter. What I like to use hard limiter for is to make sure that it never goes over 0.1 dB. That is just an extra, I don't need that. That's a guided safety net. Now this is my setup, okay, I use for everything, but we're not done for ACX. At this point, your audio should be cleaned up, ready to go, but we want to go up to this loudness tab. If this loudness tab isn't showing, you go over to these double arrows, it will show up here, okay? Uh, I, mine's showing up out here because I've pulled this whole thing open like this. So I pull up this loudness tab, and yours will probably look like this, all right? And what you want to do is hit this match loudness settings, come down to the ITU-RBS, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set the target loudness at negative 20. I mean, you can set it at negative 18, negative 19. So this is like the RMS, right? And what we're trying to do is make sure it sits between negative 18 and negative 23 dB. That's where we want the overall RMS or the rate mean square, which is just an interesting way that they, you know, average basically the overall noise level, sound level, right? Uh, noise level of your piece. So I set mine at negative 20. <clears throat> but the reason why I use this and not the total RMS, okay, um, or the total RMS, 
is that I like to use this one because it also allows you to set a max true, uh, a max true peak level. And I like to set mine at negative 3.2 because, as you know, an ACX, it can't go over negative 3. I set it at negative 3.2 because I found sometimes when doing lots of files, sometimes they won't always, they'll go to like negative 2.98 or negative 8.9. It's like a pain in the butt. So I always set it at this. I don't mess around with the, uh, um, the look ahead time or the release time. I leave that the same. Okay, but this is what you want to focus on. And all you have to do at this point is take your file, drag it in here, all right? And you basically hit run, okay? And what it does is it takes your file and formats it to this and look at this now. So before, all right, if we go back, let's see. So I'm not sure if it showed me. Uh, whoops. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, we'll go back. We'll do that. So here, all right, if I got the file in here, this was the file before I did. This is amplitude st uh, statistics. You can see that the peak amplitude was at a a 0.23. Okay, so it's actually above because we got a couple peaks up here. And then the overall RMS is at point at negative 20.48. So it's actually not that bad. All right, but still, this would not pass because... It's at 0.23. It needs to be negative 3. It needs to be at least at negative 3 dB. So when I run this, all right, you can see now it has taken that away. And if I go back and scan this, all right, it shows you right here. We're at negative 3.2, which is up here as well. All right, it gives you negative 21.71 uh, dB, which is perfect, and negative 3.2 dB. This will pass ACX. It is that simple to use this, okay? It makes your life so much better. I was working with someone the other day, and bless their hearts, they were trying to do all this manually, right? Trying to, to, you know, raise this up and down, trying to figure out where, you know, and pieces here, pieces there, and then trying to, you know, get that right uh, average and that right RMS. That takes you forever. This is a really quick and easy way to do it. All right, so at this point, I go back to the default. My file is ready. The last thing I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to make sure, according to ACX uh, rules, you need to have your audio needs to start between 0.5 seconds and one second. And then on the back end, your audio needs to have at least one to five seconds of silence or room tone. Okay, so one, so I got four, five, six, seven. So I'm just gonna get rid of some of that. So one, two, three. So I've got at least I've got two to three seconds of silence. Okay, and now my file is ready to go. The last thing I get to do is I name it. So a lot of times, um, would you like to apply? Uh, no. Oh, it's, wait, wait. Oh, because it's. No, no, it's not. Uh, okay, I think I actually just erased that cleanup. That's hilarious. Um, so let's see. I want to just go here, select, get rid of that. Okay, so at this point, all right, what I want to do, all right, is I want, whoops, I want to uh, name the file. So I'm going to come here, save as, and on the name the file, when you're doing something with an audiobook, the file name must be the same as the chapter heading, the title, etc. So like if it's the introduction, you have to put introduction, all right? And here's the deal. It has to be an MP3 file. Sorry, my daughter's in the back. MP3 file, it must be at 44, 100 hertz, okay? And it must be 16. You can get away with 32 bit with the float, but 16 is what they want. These are your settings that you must have to pass. Oh, by the way, you uh, and you need to be at a 192, and it needs to be constant. It needs to be a constant bit rate, and it needs to, your your kilobytes per second needs to be 192. But I see a lot of people come to me with this variable, and it needs to be constant. All right. So these are your settings. They must be this way. If you if you do this. You're going to pass ACX standards every single time. And you've done your audio without having any plugins. Um, I hope that this video has helped, at least give you some food for thought. There's so much more we could, I could go into depth about one piece or another piece. 
and you know I, I maybe I'll do more singular videos about one piece like getting rid of mouth clicks or breaths and you know a lot of these things also remember can be taken care of by you doing work on your own vocal abilities right and you 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 practicing your craft because you know we can eliminate a lot of this stuff from the source as opposed to having to do it all in post but thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it i hope this video helps please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button also don't forget to see the academy link below a vo's journey elite academy we have 50 percent off the first month and it's absolutely besides you know wonderful tutorials like this like tonight's my class i go over marketing all kinds of different things but we have voice acting classes tech classes marketing audiobook it's etc. All kinds of fun stuff and lots of learning tutorials. And of course, an archive section if you can't make a, uh, you know, can't make one. So thank you guys so much for watching. You have a wonderful rest of your day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye.